YouTube, welcome back to Craig Cloud IT Pro. In this video, I'll be showing you how to understand and master Azure Analytics. So grab your coffee or your whiskey because you know it's going to get analytically juicy. Also, if you like the video, please drop a comment and a like down below. If you want to see other content on Sentinel or any other Azure services, just drop that comment. Let me know. I'll help you out. Mastering Azure Sentinel Analytics. So for this video, I want to cover the following topics. Azure Sentinel Analytic Types, Alerts versus Incidents, Analytic Rule Components, What Makes a Great Analytic Rule, Rule Detection Development, Alert Fatigue, and Alert uh, Analytic Tuning. So let's get to it. So Azure Sentinel Analytics, firstly, let's understand what analytic rules are available within Azure Sentinel. So we first have Schedule Query Rule, then we have Microsoft Incident Creation Rule, then Machine Learning Behavioral Analytics, and Fusion. So the Schedule Query Rule, these rules run on a set schedule to detect suspicious events. For instance, you can have a rule run every few minutes, every hour, every day, or any time period. The queries for these rules are built on the KQL, and these define what you are trying to detect. These rules will make up a large proportion of your analytics. Next, we have Microsoft Incident Creation Rules, aka Microsoft Security Rules. So these rules are used to generate uh, Azure Sentinel incidents from other uh, Microsoft security solutions like Cloud App Security, Azure Security Center, uh, Azure Active Directory, Identity Protection, etc. So when you connect a solution, uh, a Microsoft solution to Sentinel, like MCAS, for example, any alert generated within the MCAS service will be stored as raw data in the security alerts table in the Azure Sentinel workspace. We then have machine learning behavioral analytics. So these rules can only be created from templates that Microsoft provides. They use proprietary Microsoft machine learning algorithms to help determine suspicious events. So by harnessing the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning, these queries can help detect abnormalities uh, in how your users behave. For example, if a user only logs into a server Monday to Friday, and then all of a sudden starts logging in to the server on the weekend, this could be an action that would be worth investigating. We then finally have Fusion. So Fusion is another Microsoft machine learning technology that will combine information from various sources to generate alerts about things that may otherwise be very difficult to detect. So these can be, this could be very powerful as some low severity alerts may not mean much looking at each one separately, but when combined together, they can dictate a much larger issue. So fusion encodes uncertainty with paths and stages by simulating different attack paths using iterative Markov chain Monte Carlo simulations. So fusion constantly updates the probability of moving to the next step in the kill chain through a custom defined prior probability function. Now, before we dive deeper, I just want to clarify that I get asked this question all the time, and it's what is the difference between an alert and an incident? So incidents are an occurrence of events that may potentially impact the confidentiality, integrity or availability of a system. So incidents can be investigated and drilled down into, including insights into the details that possibly could lead to information like usernames, devices involved, IP addresses, command lines, processes, etc. Alerts are triggered rules from a collection of events. So you might want to be alerted about, hey, someone's being added to, uh, a user's been added to the domain admins group or the schema admins group, but not actually create an incident. So we class these types of scenarios as day-to-day -day managerial tasks. By all means, these can be incidents, which you can track and then log back and in a few months when you do your SOC planning sessions, be like, well, Craig was added to X, Y, and Z, why did he want that access? 
But this really comes down to you as the customer and how you want to handle alerts and incidents. And off the back of that question, I always get asked, well, what do your customers do or what do you suggest? And honestly, it's kind of a mixture of both. If I had to give a rough example, it would be some customers wanted to have incidents raised on domain group activity purely because they are small organizations and their IT staff were minimal. So it would definitely raise red flags as to why some of those guys needed domain access or someone else has been added to domain access and they're not actually in the IT um, section. But this can also be flipped in a different scenario. So for bigger organizations, they may not want an incident and they may just want an alert uh, on that you know, specific domain group activity. So now that's out of the way, let's touch on the next bit, which is analytic rule components. So there are four real analytic components, uh, four real components that build up your analytic rules. These are rule types, criteria, trigger condition and action. So rule types are scheduled, Microsoft Security, Internet Creation Rules, Fusion, Machine Learning, etc. Criteria. So if you have a scheduled rule, you're actually defining the actual KQL query. So what are you searching for? What are you trying to detect? You then have trigger condition. So this is the threshold in Azure Sentinel. So the minimum requirement of the matching events that are equal to your query. For example, a KQL query detecting RDP brute force attempts. Alert me when there's X number of attempts within a threshold of 10 minutes. And then action. So what do you want to perform for this analytic? You can either create alerts or incidents or both. You can even perform a logic app actions for playbooks. And you now have automation rules, which you can say, for example, all of my analytic rules, I want uh, them to be posted to Teams channel for this playbook. Or you can say any analytic rule which has the condition of X, go run this playbook. So we now know our Azure Sentinel rule types. We know the differences between an alert and an incident. We know the components of an analytic rule. So what makes a good or even great analytic rule? If you don't know the answer to this, I'm deeply disappointed. <laughs> um, so what makes a great analytic rule? And obviously it's data. So in order to get the best results out of your analytics, you need to make sure that you have access and visibility to quality data. So it is important to collect data from all available logs and log sources. This will make sure that no situation is ignored. Now, once you've architected and built your query and it's running, you're doing tests, etc., there might be a stage where you think that, you know, that should have triggered my analytics. So why hasn't that analytic triggered? Now, this is a common question. So why is my analytic working? So this could be down to a number of factors. Do you have the right data available? Is your detection rule capturing the right process or technique or procedure? Have you actually enabled the rule? I know that's stupid, but sometimes it might be disabled. You know, it's always worth checking. Is the threshold correct? Is the frequency correct? So all of these factors need to be considered to help you identify why your detections are not performing at maximum capacity and maximum efficiency. Now, when it comes to developing a rule, I've got a few steps that I've put together. So, rule detection development. So, developing a detection rule can be slightly comprehensive and consist of a few steps. You know, it's like seven steps, it's not that many. So, define. So, define a technique. First, select the techniques which you think will be applicable for your business. Look at scenarios on impact of applications and infrastructure, and basically understand what problems you're trying to identify. And then move on to research. So research how the technique works. Before you start building the detection, you need to study and research how that technique works and what its relevance is to your organization. Is this ta uh, attack technique applicable to your environment? For example, you may be researching insider risk techniques, like when a user is leaving the company and they start dumping a load of data out of SharePoint. You know, that's a 
a, a risky uh, risky approach. You then have identify. So which data sources or log sources are required for monitoring and building your detection? So if we go from the example we just talked about, the SharePoint Insider Risk, we know that the data needed is Office 365. Then visualize. You need to visualize the detection scenario. So before you dive in, you need to visualize and hypothesize how the detection scenario works, how the attack can be exploited, what are the events that will take place that will be needed to monitor and detect uh, that type of attack. And then it's reviewing the data log source. So we need to confirm that the technique that you wish to leverage, you need to review the logs for the identified data sources. You need to know and understand what events and fields and event IDs need to be monitored and logged. And then it gets down into actually writing the detection query. So coupled with all these steps above, you can now start architecting your KQL query based on your scenario. And then tune, fine tune your detection. After you've put in your KQL query, it's imperative that you fine tune it. You may be getting a little bit more noise than you expected, but this happens and honestly, it's really not a big deal. Which brings me nicely onto alert fatigue. So, once your data is being ingested, your analytics are set up, everything's flowing nicely, you get an alerts and you generate it. You will start to notice that you might be getting alert fatigue. Okay, so this, this isn't bad. Don't look at it like, holy crap, we've got hundreds of amounts of alerts, what do we do? Look at it like, hey, we've got hundreds of amounts of alerts. Let's start to triage some of them, see if they have any common patterns or trends that we can declare if they are false positive or legitimate. So Azure Sentinel has the intelligent capabilities to tackle some of the alert fatigue for you from the fusion and machine learning analytics. These analytics will use machine learning to search for valuable insights and provide precise context for smart decision making. So this is one example where Azure Sentinel really hits the spot. It will notice your patterns and trend, behavioral trends to further enrich your experience. So to avoid alert fatigue and false positives, if you remember what we just went through with the detection rule, we need to tune our analytics. So tuning your analytics is like a well-oiled machine, like my baby in this picture. She needs regular oil, air, and uh, filter changes. If I didn't tune or service the bike, it wouldn't work to its full capacity. In the end, I'd destroy a machine and I would cry my eyes out. So, <laughs> so there are gonna be some changes and modifications to your analytics. Don't stress that your analytic has to be perfect from the get-go. You shouldn't be trying to capture anything and everything in one single analytic. For your schedule rules, there might be an extra process which might need to be included or excluded, or maybe a command line syntax has a simple switch, or you know something that needs to be captured that wasn't when you perform your test, which can, can lead to false positives. So security moves just as fast as the cloud. Adversaries move even faster. So it's all about adapt and adopt. For example, one technique might work for a while, but adversaries will get smarter, and they'll put a little bit of extra source on the exploit or add an additional parameters which weren't captured within your first detection query. So you can't think naively when it comes to security information and event management. If you think just enabling Sentinel, enabling a few out of the box rules will help you solve your problems, you couldn't be more wrong. So putting a plan together by analyzing threat actors will help you improve your detection experience and give you a better understanding of how adversaries work. So you need to understand how adversaries chain techniques in, in which techniques have a relationship with other techniques. So how does the brute force attack against my virtual machine lead to domain accounts being compromised, which led to lateral movement. So I use the exact same process here to generate uh, my use case detection strategies by referencing the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Now this is an absolutely great place to start.
And that brings us to the end of the video. So hopefully you will now be a master at creating, developing and understanding how Azure Sentinel Analytics work. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.